Well, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God as we continue the book of Jeremiah. So we ended with God wanting to search our hearts and asking us to come back to him from our places of backsliding. We can be in the church and yet backsliding. You can be called a child of God. You can call yourself a Christian and yet still be in a backslidden state. So if you haven't had the opportunity to read Jeremiah 1 through uh, 4, go read it so that you can make sure that um, what was operating in the children of Israel is not operating in you in this day and time, okay? So we're just going to dive right in because many of you know that I'm doing back-to-back -back, um, tapings. So we're going to dive right in. So Father, we thank you for the book of Jeremiah. We thank you that you're using Jeremiah to show us, not to condemn us, but to show us that sometimes the condition of our heart prevents us from walking in the true blessings that you have for us. So we thank you for the book of Jeremiah. We thank you for the illustrations that you're showing us through the children of Israel and the nation of Judah that this is not how we're supposed to operate. We will not be duped by sin. <coughs> when sin says, you can do whatever you want to do, God's not going to do anything. Or you feel that, well, I'm okay, this is not a real sin, so everything is okay. Jeremiah is showing us that the nation of Israel did that to God, and God burned with anger because of that. So maybe some of the things that you've been experiencing in life is because you've turned your back to God. And you know what God said? He said, all he sees is your backside. <coughs> when in actuality, God wants to have a face-to-face -face conversation with us. He wants to do that all the time. Not just whenever you're in trouble and you need him to come and fix something but on a daily basis, have a face-to-face -face conversation with him. So in Jeremiah 5, we're going to see that God tells Jeremiah, go and search for someone. Can you find one soul? Doesn't that sound like something we've heard before? God said that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and, 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 and um, um, Abraham began to... Uh, plead with God, negotiate with God. But the, it's the same story. If I can just find one, just one, one soul I can use. But God is so, God is so awesome. Even though He knows that there's more than one, that shows the providence. That shows the the depth of His love. That the billions of people that are here on this earth. He's saying, if I can find one, just one to show myself strong in, although he knows there are many in the land that he can use. He's saying, but just in case there isn't, my love is so strong for this nation that if I can find one, I can heal the land. I can heal the nation. That's how God works. So, why don't you make sure that you're one of the ones that God finds? Get in a place where you're one of the ones that can be used by God to bring healing into this land. To bring healing into your land. And what does land represent? Land represents a nation. What does a nation represent? A nation represents a people. What do people represent? People represent families. What do families represent? You and I. So it's not just about the one. God wants the land. Everything associated with you. All right? 
So, Father, thank you for opening up our hearts to receive the seed of your word. We're so grateful for how you're, you're, you're sowing your word into the tables of our heart. You're uprooting, digging up, destroying all things, excuse me, that are not useful. And you're building and planting your kingdom, your ways, your character, your love, your compassion in our hearts. We thank you for it, Father. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5 from the Message Bible. Well, the title reads, Sins are piled sky high. Well, now we already know that Jeremiah was a, he was a, he was a national governmental prophet. So he is used mightily by God to pull down principalities that were operating in the land of Israel. And that's what he's doing in our lives. He's pulling down principalities that were operating in our lives. So he tells him, he says, patrol the sh uh, patrol Jerusalem streets. Look around. Take note. Search the market squares. See if you can find one man, one woman, a single soul who does what is right and tries to live a true life. I want to forgive that person. That is beautiful. God's decree. But if all they do is say, as sure as God lives, they're, a, they're nothing but a bunch of liars. But you, God, you have an eye for truth, don't you? So see, this is Jeremiah asking God, well, don't you have an eye for truth? You hit them hard. But it didn't phase them. You disciplined them, but they refused correction. Are you refusing correction? Well, you say, I don't refuse correct correction. Well, what if correction comes through the voice of your child? <gasps> what? Yeah. What if correction comes through your boss? What? Yeah. What if correction comes through that person that you just don't like. You don't like their aura. You don't like their space. You don't like their look. You don't like their voice. But what if God is bringing correction? Correction that can deliver you and it's coming through them. So what do we do? We refuse correction. Hard-headed, harder than a rock, they wouldn't change. Then I said to myself, well, these are just poor people. They don't know better. They were never taught anything about God. They never went to prayer meetings. I'll find some people, I'll find some people from the best families. I'll talk to them. They'll know what's going on, the way God works. They'll know, they'll know the score, but they were no better. Rebels, all of them. Off doing their own thing. The invaders are ready to kill and pounce like a mountain. I'm sorry. The invaders are ready to pounce and kill like a mountain lion, a wilderness wolf, panthers on the prowls. The streets aren't safe anymore. Why? Because the people's sins are piled sky high. Their betrayals are past counting. So why should I even bother with you any longer your children wander off leaving me taking up with other gods they aren't even good gods they aren't even gods they take up with gods that aren't even gods i satisfied their deepest needs and then they went off with the sacred whores left me for orgies and sex shrines a bunch of well groomed lusty stallions each one pawning and snorting for his wife's for his neighbor's wife. Do you think I'm going to stand around and do nothing? God's decree. 
Don't you think I'll take serious measures against a people like this? But God is still sending, looking, searching, searching the earth for one. Will you be that one? Will you be the one that God can use to heal the land? Will you be the one that God can use to heal your co-workers? Will you be the one that God can use to heal your family members? Will you be the one? Eyes that don't really look, ears that don't really listen. Now let me reiterate, yes, this is judgment, but the way we're tackling Jeremiah is we're saying, God, let us see what the children of Israel did, how they sinned against you, and let us not repeat those same sins. Right? Go down the rows of vineyards and rip out the vines, but not all of them. Leave a few. Prune back those vines that didn't come from God. That, that, I'm sorry, prune back those vines. That growth didn't come from God. They betrayed me over and over again. Judah and Israel both, God's decree. They've spread lies about God. They've said there's nothing to him. Lies. Nothing bad will happen to us. Lies. Neither famine nor war will come our way. Lies. The prophets are all windbags. No authority. No power. They speak nothing but nonsense. Therefore, this is what God said to me. God of the angel armies. Because they have talked this way. They're going to eat those words. Watch now. I'm putting my words of fire in your mouth. And the people are a pile of kindling, ready to go up in flames. Verse 15. Attention. I'm bringing a far off nation against you, O house of Israel. God's decree. A solid nation. An ancient nation. A nation that speaks another language. Who won't excuse me, who won't understand a word, you won't understand a word they say. When they aim their arrows, you're as good as dead. They're a nation of real fighters. They'll clean you out of house and home, rob you of crops and your children alike. They'll feast on your sheep and cattle, strip your vines and fig trees. And the fortresses that made you feel safe, Every area, how you tried to box yourself in and make yourself feel good and make yourself together, seem like everything's together. You got money in the bank. You got all this stuff stacked up. God says, I'm taking it all. I'm going to have it wiped out. He says, leveled with the stroke of the sword. Done, finished, bankrupt. 18, even then, as bad as it will be, God's decree it will not be the end of the world for you. Even though he strips you, it won't be over. God still is providing a way of escape from sin. He says it won't be the end for you. And when people ask, well, why did our God do all this to us? You must say to them, it's tit for tat. See, God can be petty also. He said, you do this? I'm going to do that. You're going to play the dozens. I'm going to play the dozens back with you. But when I play the dozens, you're going to feel it. Just as you left me and served foreign gods in your own country, so now you must serve foreigners in their own country. Tell the house of Jacob this. Put out this bulletin in Judah. Listen to this. You scatterbrains, airheads, with eyes that don't see, Really, look, and ears that hear but don't really listen. You don't honor me. Let me tell you something. If you want to learn something on the subject of honor, I would tell you to go and listen to the series that Apostle Matthew Stevenson is teaching on honor. It will bless your soul. God is saying, why don't you honor me? Honor 
covers a wide range of topics. Go and look him up on YouTube. And it will Facebook Live also. It will bless you. Why aren't you in awe before me? Yes, who made the seashore. I'm sorry. Yes, me who made the shorelines to contain the ocean waters. I drew a line in the sand that cannot be crossed. Waves roll in, but cannot get through. Breakers crash, but that's the end of them. But this people, what a people. Uncontrollable, untamable, runaways. It never occurs to them to say, how can we order honor our God with our lives? Is your life honoring God? It's a simple answer. It's either yes or no. There is no middle line. Is your life honoring God? The God who gives rain in both spring and autumn and maintains the rhythm of the season, who seasons, who sets aside time each year for harvest and keeps everything running smoothly for us? Of course you didn't. Your bad behavior blinds you to all of this. Your sin keeps my blessings at a distance. You can't blame God and get mad at your brother and your sister who God is blessing, who's walking an honorable life, who's walking out this word, who's walking out their soul salvation. You cannot get mad at them because you're not blessed. You're not blessed because you won't walk in the will of God, in the ways of God. You can't even blame God for that. It's because you won't turn your heart to him. So he says, stand for nothing and stand up for no one. Verse 26, my people are um, infiltrated by wicked men, unscrupulous men on the hunt. They set traps for unsuspecting, un, for the unsuspecting. Their victims are innocent men and women. Their houses are stuffed with ill-gotten game, like a hunter's bag full of birds. P uh, pretentious and powerful and rich, hugely obese, oily with rolls of fat. Worse, they have no conscience. So people are drawing you into a life of sin, and they know it, and they don't care. They're introducing you to things that they know don't please God. But they don't care because their conscience has been seared. Right and wrong mean nothing to them. They stand for nothing, stand up for no one, throw orphans to the wolves, exploit the poor. Do you think I'll stand by and do nothing about this? God's decree. Don't you think I'll take serious measures against people like this? Unspeakable, sickening. What's happened in this country? Prophets preach lies and priests hire on as their assistants. And my people love it. They eat it up. You run to those prophets. You run to those preachers. But the ones that are preaching the true word of God, we get one or two visitors. You get three or four visitors because people don't want to hear the truth because their ears hear, but they don't hear their eyes see, but you can't see. But what will you do when it's time to pick up the pieces? After they have destroyed your life, you're in shambles. You've given all your money to, to, to the shenanigans that are going on and then you get mad at God. But your discernment was off. You couldn't even tell that they were fake prophets. You couldn't even tell that those preachers were not preaching the true unadulterated word of God. All right. Chapter six. 
Run for your lives, children of Benjamin. Get out of Jerusalem. And now, get out of those dead houses. Now, seek, find Holy Spirit. Show me a house that your word is being preached where Holy Spirit has true reign in that house where Holy Spirit is transforming lives, where Holy Spirit is healing, where Holy Spirit is delivering, where Holy Spirit is setting people free. Show me where those places are in your city. You might have to drive a few miles, but be willing to do it. It will save your soul. Hallelujah. My God, my God. All right, get out of Jerusalem and now give a blast on the ram's horn in Blastville. Send up smoke signals from the smoke town. This is a blast. Get out of those dead places. God has given you permission to leave a dead house that's speaking lies. Don't run after prophets. Don't run after all that. Run after the face of God and God will show you that man or that woman that he has anointed and appointed to speak the true word of God that will liberate you. That will get the hell hounds off of your back. That will destroy the yokes that have been placed on your neck. The prison bars will be open. And you'll be able to fly freely. Right? He'll restore your youth. He'll restore all that the canker worm and the pommel worm and the caterpillar, all that they ate up. God will restore it. But you got to be in the right house. A house where the river of God is flowing. Why do you need the river of God? The river of God cleanses. It refreshes a house where the voice of God is being heard. The voice of God directs. All right? Doom pours out of the north. Massive terror. I have likened my dear daughter Zion to a lovely meadow. Well, now shepherds from the north have discovered her and brought into their flocks I'm, I'm sorry, and brought in their flocks of soldiers. They pitch camp all around her and plain where they'll graze and plan where they'll graze and then prepare to attack. Do you know that there are people that are watching, waiting for the moment to attack and pounce on you? because you don't know the word so they can feed you garbage and then it gets your eyes off of God and it makes you dull but God calls you to be a light a blaze in him not dull with no authority the fight is on to arms, we'll strike at noon is what they say. Oh, it's too late. Day is dying. Even shadows are coming upon us. Well, up and away, we'll attack by night and tear apart her defenses stone by stone. Ooh, my battery's going down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, the battery's going down. Sorry, sorry. Um, how am I gonna do this? Hold on. Gotta get juice in here.
right, sorry about that. I should have checked it before I got started. Sorry. He says, um, they'll tear, they'll tear apart her defenses stone by stone. Verse six, God of the angel armies gave the orders. Chop down her trees, build up a siege ramp against Jerusalem. A city full of brutality, bursting with violence. Just as a well holds a good supply of water, she supplies wickedness non-stop. <sighs> wow. Are we supplying wickedness non-stop? Is that what we're doing? Oh God, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. The street echoes the cries, violence, rape, Victims bleeding and moaning lie all over the place. You're in deep trouble, Jerusalem. Are you in trouble? Are you in trouble right now? <sighs> Woo. You've punished me to the limit. You're on the brink of being wiped out, being turned into a ghost town. Time's up. Harvest the grapes for judgment. Salvage what is left of Israel. Go back over the vines. Pick them clean, every last grape. So God is asking in verse 10, is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? I've got something to say. Is anybody listening? I've a, I, I've a warning to post. Will anyone notice? It's hopeless. Their ears are stuffed with wax. Deaf as a post, blind as a bat. It's hopeless. They've turned out God. They don't want to hear from me, but I'm bursting with wrath, but I'm bursting with the wrath of God. I can't hold it much longer. So dump it on the children in the streets. Let it loose on the gangs of the youth, for no one is exempt. Why is all this stuff happening? Because we turned our backs on God. We see so much violence in our land. You think this is just happening by happenstance? No, these spirits have come in and they have begun to come through the generation of the children. Since when have we heard of so many children being murdered? Well, Astra was one of those demons that took children as a sacrifice. Bear all of that. Do you think this is just happenstance that this is happening? Our backs have been turned against God and these spirits are riding on our children. Our sin affects generations. So it's time to get it together. Man and woman, boy and girl, it's time to get it together. What we do affects someone else. Come on. He says, husbands and wives will be taken. The old and those ready to die, their homes will be given away. All they owned, even their loved ones. When I give this signal against all who live in this country, God's decree. Everyone's after the dishonest dollar. I didn't say it. It's in the Bible. Everyone's after the dishonest dollar. Little people, big people alike, prophets and priests, everyone in between. Twist words and doctor truth. Did you hear what the Bible said? It says they twist words and they doctor truth. That's why we need Holy Spirit truth. Because he gives us the truth. Amen. Wow. Mm. People are broken. Yeah, people are broken right now. Shattered. Don't know how to trust God. 
because of a lying prophet, a lying priest, a lying person that's carrying the name of a Christian. And they put on band-aids. And this is not only Christians. These are people who don't even know God yet, but don't even want to know God. So they put on band-aids saying, it's not so bad. You'll be just fine. Lies. You're, you're broken. Your heart is broken. Your spirit is broken. Your soul is broken. And a band-aid can't fix that. Do you suppose they are embarrassed over this outrage? No, they have no shame. Walk around all bandaged up. We will walk around bandaged up, hurting and bruised instead of turning to God who can heal you. They don't even know how to blush. There's no hope for them. They've hit bottom and there's no getting up. As far as I'm concerned, they're finished. God has spoken. So this is what happens. See, it, it's like progressions. Now it says, death is on the prowl. Verse 16, God's message yet again. God stands at the crossroads and look around. Oh, he said, go stand at the crossroads and look around. Ask for directions to the old road, the tried and true road, then take it. So people say that Bible is too antiquated. It doesn't, God doesn't even exist. That Bible is no use anymore. The Old Testament doesn't work. The New Testament, Jesus is just a prophet. But God says, if you want to live, you need to go down that old, tried and true old road. The road of the Bible, the road of the Bible, the road of God. That's the road you need to be on. Remember in Matthew, it says that many go on the broad path, but few will go on the straight path. That straight path that leads to God. And it's not saying that it's a straight, like a straight line. It means straight, a very narrow, constricted path. Many don't want that path. But God is saying, that's the path. That when you walk down that path, that's where you'll find me. You'll find me on the way. Remember when we read that in Romans? He said, on that broad path, they're going to come against a stone. And they're going to try to go around the stone. But you can't go around the stone because he's the stone. But if you would walk with him... You'll find him along the way. And he won't be in your way, but he'll be along the way with you. Wouldn't you rather walk the road that brings about peace and you find God along the way instead of the road that every step you take, you're bumping up against the stone, against the brick of God? That ought to hurt. All right. Discover the right route for your souls. But they said, nothing doing. I'm not going down that road. Too constricted. Too many rules. Too many statutes. Too many ordinances. Too many do's and don'ts. We're not going that way. I even provided watchmen for them to warn them to set off the alarm. But the people said, it's a false alarm. God's not going to do anything. I'm okay. It doesn't concern us. And so I'm calling in the nations as a witness. Watch, witnesses, what happens to them. And pay attention, earth. The earth is even saying, hey, 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 what are you doing? But God says, earth, watch, watch. Don't miss these bulletins. I'm visiting catastrophe on this people. The end result of the games they've been playing with me. They've ignored everything I've said. Had nothing but contempt for my teachings. What would I want with incense brought 
in from Sheba, rare spices from exotic places. Your burnt sacrifices in worship give me no pleasure. Your religious rituals mean nothing to me. You come into church, honoring God with your lip means nothing to him. So listen to this. Here's God's verdict on the way of, on the way, I'm sorry. Here's God's verdict on your way of life. Watch out. I'm putting roadblocks, roadblocks and barriers on the road you're taking. They'll send you sprawling parents and children, neighbors and friends. And that will be the end of the lot of you. See, doesn't this sound like Romans? Don't we hear the voice of Paul speaking, Jeremiah? Come on, don't we hear it? God still hasn't changed his way. He says, I will be your stumbling block. I will be your roadblock. Every way you try to turn, you're going to bump up against me. And listen to this verdict from God. Look out. An invasion from the north. A mighty power on the move from a far away place. Armed to the teeth. Vicious and pitless. Booming like sea storm and thunder. Tramp, tramp, tramp. Riding hard on war horses. In battle formation against you. Dear daughter Zion, against you. Now, daughter Zion is part of the church. He's talking to you, not just those out there. He's talking to you, sister so and so, and brother so and so, and Chantel. He's talking to us. If we don't get right with God, verse 24. We heard the news and we were as limp as wet dish, dish rags. We're paralyzed with fear. Terror has a death grip on our throats. Don't dare go outdoors. Don't leave the house. Death is on the prowl. Danger everywhere. Dear daughter, Zion, dress in black. Blacken your faces with ash. Weep most bitterly as for an only child. The countdown has begun. Six, five, four, three. The terror is on us. God gave me this task. I have made you the examiner of my people to examine and weigh their lives. They're thick-headed. <laughs> They're a thick-headed, hard-nosed bunch, rotten to the core, the lot of them. Refining fires are cranked up to white heat but the ore stays as uh, I'm, I'm sorry but the ore stays a lump unchanged it's useless to keep trying any no, any longer nothing can refine evil out of them <laughs> you can't refine evil that's just like trying to uh trying to talk to a demon you got to cast that stuff out God's got to get that stuff up out of you. Men will give up and call them slag. Throw on the slag heap by me, their God. My goodness. Chapter 7. The nation that wouldn't obey God. Lord, don't let us be a people that just will be, be like the children of Israel and be a nation that won't obey God. The message from God to Jeremiah, stand in the gate of God's temple and preach this message. Say, listen, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship God, God of the angel armies, Israel's God has this to say to you. This is what God is saying to us. Clean up your act, the way you live, the things you do, so you can make my home, so I can make a home, I'm sorry, so I can make my home with you in this place. Don't for a minute believe the lies being spoken here. This is God's temple, God's temple, God's temple. Total nonsense. Only if you clean up your act, the way you live, the things you do, only if you do a total spring cleaning on the way you live and treat your neighbors 
only if you quit exploiting the street people and orphans and widows, no longer taking advantage of innocent people on this very site and no longer destroying your souls by using this temple as a front for other gods. Only then will I move into your neighborhood. Only then will God move into your heart when you repent of all of this. Only then will this country I gave your ancestors be my permanent home, my temple. God, now we know when Christ came, there was no longer the need for the temple. We are the temple of God. So the only way that God is going to come in and live in your temple is you repent of all the things that we've done. Of putting other gods before him. Of turning our backs on him. Get smart. Your leaders are handing you a pack of lies. That's in the Bible. God said it. Your leaders are handing you a pack of lies and you're swallowing them. You're eating it up. Use your heads. Do not think you can rob and murder and have sex with the neighborhood wives tell lies nonstop, worship the local gods, and buy every novel religious commodity on the market, and then march into this temple set apart from my worship and say, we're safe. Thinking that the place itself gives you a license to go on with all this outrageous sacrilege. A cave full of criminals. Do you think you can turn this temple set apart for my worship into something like that? Well, think again. I've got eyes in my head. I can see what's going on. You can't hide what you're doing from God. You can turn the lights off. You can put a candle on. You can dress. You can put on a wig. You can put on a toupee. Now they paint them on for men. You can lighten your skin. You can darken your skin. You can change your lipstick. You can change your eye color. You can do all that. But God still sees it. You can't hide it from him. He sees it. Verse 12. Take a trip down to the place that was once in Shiloh, where I met my people in the early days. Take a look at those ruins, what I did to it because of the evil ways of my people Israel. Verse 13, so now, because of the way you lived and failed to listen, even though time and again, I took you aside and talked seriously with you, and because you refused to change when I called you to repent, I'm going to do this to the temple, set aside for my worship. This place you think is going to keep you safe no matter what. This place I gave as a gift to your ancestors and to you the same as I did to Shiloh. And as for you, I'm going to get rid of you. The same as I got rid of those old relatives of yours around Shiloh your fellow Israelites in the former kingdom to the north. Verse 16, and you, Jeremiah, don't waste your time praying for this people. Don't offer to make petitions or intercessions. Don't bother me with them. I'm not listening. Can't you see what they're doing in the villages of Judah and in the Jerusalem streets? Why? They've got the children gathering wood while the fathers build fires and the mothers make bread to be offered to the queen of heaven. And as if that weren't bad enough, they go around pouring out libations to any other God they come across just to hurt me. But it is me they're hurting. God's decree. Aren't they just, aren't they just hurting themselves, exposing themselves shamefully, making themselves ridiculous? Here's what the master God has to say. My white hot anger is about to descend on this country and everything in it. 
people and animals, trees in the field and vegetables in the garden. A raging wildfire that no one can put out. The message from God of the angel armies, Israel's God. Go ahead, put your burnt offerings with all your other sacrificial offerings and make a good meal for yourselves. I sure don't want them. When I deliver your ancestors, when I delivered your ancestors out of Egypt, I never said anything to them about wanting burnt offerings and sacrifices as such. But I did say this commandment, obey me. Do what I say and I will be your God and you will be my people. Live the way I tell you. Do what I command so that your lives will go well. Verse 24, but do you think they listen? Not a word of it. They did just what they wanted to do, indulged in any and every evil whim and got worse day by day. For the time of, from the time of your ancestors, from the time your ancestors left the land of Egypt until now, I've supplied a steady stream of my servants, prophets. But do you think the people listened? Not once, stubborn as mules and worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but don't expect them to listen. Call out to them, but don't expect them an answer. Tell them, you. Why is this saying my battery is still low? Hold on. Why is it doing that? Oh, why this charge is not taking I'm going to try to finish this I've got it plugged in but it's saying my charge is almost out uh, tell them all this but don't expect them to listen call out to them but don't expect an answer tell them you are the nation that wouldn't obey God that refused all discipline truth has disappeared there's no trace of it left in your mouths so shave your heads, go bald to the hills and lament, for God has rejected and left this generation that has made him so angry. The people of Judah have lived evil lives while I've stood by and watched God's decree. In deliberate insult to me, they've sent up their obscene God images to the very temple that was built to honor me. They constructed Topheth altars, for burning babies in prominent places all through the valley of Ben Hanan, altars for burning their sons and daughters alive in the fire, a shocking perversion of all that I am and all I command. But very soon, God's decree, the name Topath and Ben Hanan will no longer be used. They will call the place what it is murder meadows. Corpses will be stacked up in Topath because there's no room left to bury them. Corpses abandoned in the open air, fed on by cows and coyotes who have turned, I'm sorry, who have the run of the place and now empty both smiles and laughter from the villages of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. No wedding songs, no holiday sounds, dead silence. Going to try to finish verse 8 before my battery dies. I don't know why it's not charging. And when the time comes, God's decree, I'll see to it that they dig up the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of the princes and priests and prophets, and yes, even the bones of the common people. They'll dig them up and spread them out like a congregation at worship before sun, moon, and stars. All those sky gods, they've been in... Uh, um, uh, they've been so infatuated with all these years, following their lucky stars in dog-like devotion. The bones will be left scattered and exposed to re-enter the soil as fertilizer like manure. Everyone left all from the evil generation, unlucky enough to still be alive in whatever God-forsaken place will I have driven them to. Will wish they were dead. Decree of God the angel of the angel armies. Verse four, tell them this, God's message. Do people fall down and not get up or take the wrong road and then just keep going? 
So why does this people go backwards? Why are you going backwards? And just keep going backwards. They stubbornly hold on to their illusions, refuse to change direction. I listened carefully, but heard not so much as a whisper. No one expressed one word of regret. Not a single I'm sorry did I hear. They just kept at it blindly and stupidly, banging their heads against a brick wall. Cranes know when it's time to move south for the winter, and robins, war, war bellows, and bluebirds know when it's time to come back again. But my people, my people know nothing, not the first thing of God and his rule. How can you say we know the score? We're the proud owners of God's revelation. Look where it's gotten you, stuck in illusion. Your religion experts have taken you for a ride. Your know-it-alls will be unmasked. God is unmasking this foolishness. Caught up, I'm sorry, unmasked, caught, and showing up for what they are. Look at them. They know everything but God's word. Do you call that knowing? So here's what will happen to the know-it-alls. I'll make them wifeless and homeless. Everyone's after their dishonest dollar. Little people and big people, prophets and priests and everyone between twist the, the words and doctor the truth. My dear daughter, my people broken, shattered, and yet they put on band-aids saying it's not so bad. You'll be just fine, but things aren't fine. Do you suppose they're embarrassed over this outrage? No, not really. They have no shame. They don't even know how to blush. There is no hope for them. They've hit bottom and there's no getting up. As far as I'm concerned, they're finished. God has spoken. I went out to see if I could salvage anything, God's decree, but found nothing. Not a grape, not a fig, just a few withered leaves. I'm taking back everything I gave them. So why are they sitting here doing nothing? Let's get organized. Let's go to the big city and at least die fighting. We've gotten God's ultimatum. We're damned if we do and damned if we don't. Damned because of our sin against him. We hope things would turn out for the best, but it didn't happen that way. We were going, uh, we were waiting around for healing and terror showed up. From Dan at the northern borders, we hear the hooves of the horses, horses galloping, horses neighing, the ground shudders and quakes. They're going to swallow up the whole city. I'm sorry, the whole country. Towns and people are like fodder for war. What's more, I'm dispatching poisonous snakes among you. Snakes that can't be charmed. Snakes that will bite you and kill you, God's degree. I drown in grief. I'm heart uh, sick. Oh, listen, please listen. It's the cry of my people reverberating through the country. Is God no longer in Zion? Can you tell me, uh, has, he, has the king gone away? Can you tell me why they flaunt their plaything gods? Their silly imported no gods before me? The crops are in, the summer is over, but for us, nothing has changed. We're still waiting to be rescued. For my dear broken people, I'm heartbroken. I weep, seized by grief, and there's no healing ointments in Gilead. Is there a doctor in the house? So why can't something be done to heal and save my dear, dear people? Father, we come asking for mercy upon the land. Lord God, forgive us for running to, to lying prophets, lying preachers, speaking lies, speaking words that you never told them to speak. Father, teach us how to seek after the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit, come into our lives and destroy every tie that we have with no gods. Gods with no power, gods with no authority that you've already defeated because of the cross of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us on the path to God, 
to that old rugged path of God and we will follow you and we will walk in it. You will be our God and we will be your people. We thank you, Lord God, for the reading of your word. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Continue to go back and read these chapters and let Holy Spirit reveal the truth of the word of God to your life. Don't forget to hit the share button. And I'm going to be back on tomorrow so that we can be totally caught up. And we'll be back on track on Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. And continue to allow the word of God to be written on the tables of your heart. Continue to have face-to-face -face conversations with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Amen.